statistics uh, for those 10 years, from 72 to uh, 81, 72 to uh, 1980, the LA Rams led most of the defensive statistics in the National Football League for a decade. And uh, you can Google it, which we all did, and we took a look at it. I don't, I don't know if you have to find points, points yeah. uh, uh, yards game. Right. You know, they, all, all these six, like 26 uh, stats, I think they, they led, they were first in like about 16 or 17 of them. Uh, Dallas and certainly Minnesota and Pittsburgh were always up in the top five or so. But, but I, think, I think those statistics don't, don't uh, tell the, the full story. Uh, it's a shame that we didn't win more, more playoff games and uh, we, we, all, uh, we all know the reasons why for, for all of that. But, uh, I think the 74 team was our best team as far as I was concerned. The 74 team, the uh, 76 team was very good as well. We get beat in Minnesota both times. We all knew what happened there. And, uh, and that's just the way it goes. But the people that made up that team, you know, there, there was great players, great people like Jack and, uh, and Merlin. And, uh, and just to be a part of all of that and to share with uh, Jack and to share with uh, all those great players. But, but Jack specifically, I think, because we played the same position. But when I came to the Rams, I was traded here in 70, uh, after the uh, 71 season. I came here in 72, and Jack and I were actually playing the same position. And, uh, and uh, the great Tommy Crowthrow. <laughs> And it's briefcase. Yeah, God bless him, but he's, he's no longer with us. But uh, it, 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 there's some really interesting things about Tommy that we wouldn't go into. But, but uh, he, he had some very interesting, very good qualities. Uh, and, and other times he would be you with, uh, with his, uh, his reasoning. But he had Jack and I playing left end, and I was never a left end. Because frankly, I can't see very well from that position. So when I first met Jack, I came to him, I said, I know you think you're, you know, you're, you're going to take Deacon's spot, but I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compete. But that's not my position. You should play left end, and I should play right end. And Corey Bacon was playing right end, and he wouldn't move the tackle. That was the idea. They traded for me to put Jack and I at the ends, Merlin and Coy Bacon in tackles. And Coy wouldn't move, and uh, at the end of the season, they moved him to San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, he eventually moved. And, uh, and then uh, we got to play our, our respective positions, which I think was best for us and, 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 and certainly best for the team. But, but because we played the same position, you know, we, we saw the game exactly the same way, uh, certainly from different points of view. But with Jack, uh, what, what I learned a lot was, you know, there's intensity and there's desire, uh, and then there's intensity and then there's desire. And uh, as the broken leg is just a, it's just part of the person. It's just part of the integrity that, that he played with, that rubbed off on everybody else. And, uh, it's a team. You know, you win and lose with your team. But uh, I think for me, the, the, the best part of my association with, with, the, with the Rams for the 10 years that I was there, was through Jack Youngblood primarily, and then to the rest of the team. So, so because we were connected in many ways, I, I must say I heard you talking about your weight. Yeah, I, I show up at 220, and Jack was at 255 or something like that. And he said, "Gee, I think I could maybe get down to where you are." I said, "Don't do it. Don't, come down. Don't do it. It's not good for you. I, I'm stuck with what I got." You know, you, you don't have to necessarily do that. So, so uh, it's really interesting how uh, how people uh, define themselves within the given job description. And, uh, and I learned a great deal you know, about myself uh, as a player. Certainly, uh, uh, I learned it because uh, I had a, a good teammate, a good friend in Jack. There you go. Okay. Uh
the way this is going to start working, um, we're going to take some questions from the audience, and the autographs, when you want to get the book signed, you start lining up against the wall here with the rings. Oh, that one, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let the books blow, and of course, that side, left, right. See, I'm having the same problem you guys did. Uh, and it will sign it, and again, thanks to everyone for coming out. This has been an awesome event. Stick around, of course, because the Rams will be... Well, she's gone now. The Rams will be beating the Cowboys, so uh, it's all right. I'll be good today. And uh, stick around and uh, have uh, all the good food and drink here. And uh, who's got a question for Jack and or Fred? You guys had an incredible game against Seattle. I think mean, it was 76 where you shut them down. You had you shut down Seattle to like minus and minus seven yards in total offense. Did, during that game, did you guys realize what was happening? <laughs> you, you remember that day? <laughs> we did not realize on the field that day during the, during the game that it was uh, it was it was that that type of a game. We knew that we had it under control basically. Uh, that record stands today as the as the, the least yards of the, uh, in, in the history of the National Football League. I mean, so we we can, we got a pretty good record there, minus seven yards for a whole football game. Uh, one of the funniest times I've ever had on the field. <laughs> Freddie, Freddie loses it chasing Jim Zorn. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Should I tell the story? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and they were a terrible team. <laughs> and, uh, and they knew it, and we knew it, and they knew that we knew it. <laughs> so uh, by the time the game came, the only thing Jim Zorn, who used to be with us, with the Rams, and uh, he, he'd run around to practice on the taxi squad, and it, it was so frustrating. He was left-handed. Every time he would come out, he'd come out to, to his left side, my side. So I knew in the game that if he's going to take off, he's coming my way. Of course, Raymond Alves is Gene Trey. He says to me before the game, so now remember, you got to be aware of Jim Zorn running out your way. So really, we only practice on that for the last few weeks. <laughs> so, so sure enough, here comes the game. Uh, and uh, uh, he takes off. He goes that way towards Jack. And then he makes a U-turn and comes way back around over here. Now, I had done my job of containing him. So I was now pursuing. But he went way back around. He came back around and, and took off for like about, uh, I think it was 25 yards or something. Yeah. <clears throat> so as I'm running over to the sideline following him, I run right into Ray Mount Basin. <laughs> he is yelling all the non Sunday dialogue you could possibly get <laughs> at me. And I stopped, I took my helmet off, and I handed it to him and I said, Hey, asshole, why don't you chase your son? Now you gotta remember, I'm behind all this watching it, and I stop and start laughing too. <laughs> about the heart of the players of today versus when you played. Obviously, when you played with a broken leg, I don't know that you'd see that today. Um, do you attribute that to just uh, the times or the size of their contracts and then being afraid of getting hurt? It's part of all of the above. It's the time, it's a different time. Uh, there's a different reason to play today than there was in our day. Um, I think there's, for the, for the queen of the league today, the passion is the same. Uh, the reason to play is the same. For the, for the general middle of it, I think it's different. I think it's totally different. I think they're out there for, for themselves, specifically, and not the football team, and not, and not to win as a, as a unit, as a team. Unfortunately, the economics of the, of, of, of the game have caused that to a certain degree. They jump around from team to team now. Well, they, yeah, they jump around from team to team. That's irrelevant. It's because it's that the passion to play and to play well comes from the individual. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be in Seattle and still have the same, you know, same, uh, same passion to play. But it has changed. There's no question. All right, one more question. Anybody back there have one for uh, Jack? Uh, 
Jack, did you ever think about a career in coaching? You would have made a hell of a coach. No, I get beat up about the coach. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the patience. I coaching good coaches, and Freddie and I both have, have uh, we've seen we've seen our share of both coaches, goods and bad coaches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Our boy said it, but uh, I wouldn't make it because it's, it's a gift to be able to teach, to be able to to, to communicate with the, with whoever it is that you that you got in front of you. You don't get to choose those guys. You you get given guys, and then you got to communicate with them. That's difficult to do. I'm I'm a, I'm like my grandfather. If I tell you to do something and you don't do it, I'm gonna snatch you out of the way, and I'm gonna go do it. So that's my answer. Ray Mount Basin. my favorite. All right. That, of course, Jack Youngblood. Because it was Sunday, the legend of Jack Youngblood, along with D.W. D.B. Cooper. Oh, D.W. Cooper. I wonder where D.B. Cooper is. That's, that's the guy that jumped out of the airplane. Yeah, so Jack found him and done something else he was worried at. Uh, he, wrote, he wrote it on the way down. <laughs> he had a long fall. Uh, Okay, Jack's going to be signing the books. Uh, again, he's got some other commitments afterwards, but if there's any time, he'll do it. He'll take pictures with you while you're getting the book signed. That's great. Stick around again for the Rams and the Cowboys. And I just want to relate something personal. Um, you know, it's, it was my honor as a fan and then as a reporter and a talk show host and part of the broadcasting to cover guys like Jack and Fred Dreyer and Vince Ferragamo and people like that. But I have a somewhat dubious distinction of being the last voice of the L.A. Rams. Uh, I signed off on Christmas Eve of 1994 after they lost to the Redskins from Anaheim Stadium. I said, I don't know if there's going to be a game here next year as the Los Angeles Rams or not, but this could be the final broadcast of the Los Angeles Rams. Good night. So I said, okay, so let's bring our damn football team back home. On behalf of Bring Back the Los Angeles Rams, we have nearly 4,000 likes on Facebook. Look us up, Facebook.com Los Angeles Rams. Um, we want to present two of the all-time great LA Rams, uh, Fred Dreyer and Jack Youngblood, with uh, these t-shirts. Hold them up.